Today I'll be telling you about the repotting of this ficus. I bought this tree about two years ago on an auction and the tree hasn't been doing good. I left the tree to grow for about the full season. Um, I just bought it from the auction so I didn't know what the health of the tree was like. I let it grow out long shoots. The shoots were about 20, 30 centimeters and then I cut it back um, at the beginning of the growing season and then in the middle of summer in December I cut the tree back and I defoliated the tree and now currently the tree has strong new shoots that's growing out but it's still not doing as good as my other ficuses so what I want to do is re totally repot the tree now because it's the right time to repot this tree so what I'll do is I'll show you guys exactly how I start repotting this tree I'll start with taking out all the weeds and then after I've taken out all the weeds I'll show you guys how I comb out the roots and then put it into new potting soil. So the new potting soil is going to be my mixture of Lekka and Permilite 50-50 and then uh, one unit of vermicompost and one unit of well decomposed compost. I'll be putting that tree in there and then I'll show you guys how the tree looks when it's fully repotted and then I'll do a couple of follow-up videos to show you guys how it actually grows um, after repotting. So let's dive into it. Over the weekend, I finally had the opportunity to replant my big ficus bonsai. This tree is a true giant and required more than two hands to repot. In the absence of my trusty assistant, my 15 year old daughter, who was still away on holiday, I turned to my wife for assistance. Grateful that she agreed to lend a hand, I soon found myself making a rookie mistake in the midst of the tree transplanting adventure. Working on a bonsai of this magnitude demanded meticulous planning, ensuring everything was in reach for a smooth operation. The day before, I prepared my soil mixture, I laid out my tools and I even covered the living room floor with plastic, transforming it into a temporary bonsai workspace. A big shout out to my wife who graciously allowed me to take over a large part of the living room with soils, pots, tools and camera gear. Bright and early the next morning, we began the task of relocating the tree onto the table. I kicked things off by clearing away the weeds from the soil and I also discovered a snail residing among the roots of the bonsai. Extracting the tree from the pot turned out to be no easy feat. After tilting the entire tree and pot to check for anchoring, I used a knife to loosen the roots clinging to the pot sides. Fortunately, there were no cables or wires anchoring the tree, allowing me to proceed. Lifting the tree out, I immediately delved into working on the roots, discovering a substantial root ball, taking through to the single prong rack and washing the roots off. I encountered a clump of old, wet and compact soil mixture. My suspicions about the tree's less than vigorous growth were confirmed. Once the old soil was removed, I commenced trimming back the roots, eliminating lengthy ones and addressing surface roots that were crossing and running amok.
compensate for the removed roots and soil, I created a mound of soil mixture in the middle of the pot for the root ball to rest on, a necessary step. This will stabilize the tree, but also provide a fresh batch of growing medium for the roots under the tree. Here's where the rookie mistake came into play. Did you catch it? I planted the tree at a slight angle, with the branches misaligned with the front of the pot. A deviation of 20 degrees from the right to be precise. While correctable in the next replanting, this oversight should never have occurred. My focus on returning the tree to the pot overshadowed checking the front position. Setting aside the rookie blunder, overall, the replanting process went smoothly. Stay tuned for a short follow-up video once the tree starts displaying signs of new growth. And as always, happy bonsai!